Well, hello there. Welcome to today's video. And I guess this is going to be a happy new year video as well. Uh, and happy new decade. Hope you guys are all doing awesome. Today I am in Dallas, Texas, uh, kicking off my run of four shows in five days for another weekend of New Year's Eve week madness. Uh, if you work in the production industry, you know that New Year's Eve week is uh, one of the busiest times of the year and this is the busiest New Year's I've had so far. I'm excited for these shows for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm working with an artist who I've never worked with before tonight for the first show. So I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous because it's just that butterflies of working with a crew you've never worked with before. But uh, every time that's happened in the past, it's always gone super well. I'm gonna be working with Young Bay tonight. We're doing a stage over at Lights All Night. Um, and the only part I'm nervous about today is that I didn't have any overnight programming and we've just got an hour on the rig. I was hoping when I originally booked this that um, we'd be on the same stage as Lewis the Child tomorrow because I'm kind of overlapping doing multiple gigs in the same city for different artists. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but uh, I was hoping that we would have the same stage. It didn't turn out to be the case, so I have to program two different stages. Oh no, I know, right? I'm also excited because I've got my new time code rack right here. Uh, it didn't break <laughs> in transit, so uh, I'm excited to be using that for the first time with uh, our Lewis the Child Tour Festival setup. Right, so we got a super hectic weekend ahead of us and we'll be ringing in the new year with uh, the Lewis the Child crew. We'll be reunited. We've been separated for like three weeks at this point and I know we're just all excited to uh, be seeing each other again. So we'll link up with them tonight and then finish off the rest of this weekend. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So first up, let's head over and do some programming for our busking set. Yeah, let's do it. The first time working with a new artist is such an interesting dynamic because in a lot of ways it's kind of like going on a first date with someone and also at the same time meeting their parents, aka management, and then at the end of it also asking to get paid for your time. So it's a little bit of a weird dynamic and I'm not sure I'll ever get 100% used to it but uh, it's always nice when you, you meet up with a crew that you really click with and everybody seems to be on the same page. And of course, since first impressions are important, I'm not gonna be uh, wielding a camera around and, and vlogging every instant like I maybe would with uh, an artist who I know well and have worked with uh, for a while. On this particular stage, we were rocking the OG Elation Platinum Beam 5R, which uh, seems to be like the default substitute beam for all the B stages at every festival across the country. Now, keep in mind, these are the original Platinum Beam 5Rs, not the extreme versions. And the original 5Rs are definitely starting to show signs of their age. It was funny, I walked into the venue, looked up at the stage scaffolding structure and saw the OG Atomics, <laughs> the Xenon lamp instead of the LED that I've been so used to lately. Uh, it was It's a, a cool, cool throwback, a cool memory because I remember all of the stages that I used to uh, go program and operate out at the Gorge in the summer. Uh, Atomic 3000s were like the default strobe light and uh, it was a cool little reminiscent moment for me to to, to see all those up in a, an array. They all just kind of stopped appearing on shows all at once. At least that's what it felt like to me. They got replaced pretty much overnight by the Martin Atomic 3000 LEDs and uh, color strobes, all the LED offerings that started coming out about uh, four, four years ago now. But really there is no match for the feeling you get when you press down on one of those strobe executors and all of the xenon lamps snap on and kind of do that burning glow fade out. Uh, LED will never be able to replicate that in quite the same way in my opinion. I'm happy to report that everything seemed to go well with the Young Bay set. I mean, I had a good time and it seemed like uh, everybody else on the team had a good show as well. So now that those butterflies are gone, 
we can look forward to doing some more shows together. However, I can't celebrate for too long because we got some more work to do. I decided to hang back after the show at the venue and wait for the remainder of the Lewis the Child crew to show up for our overnight programming session on the main stage. All right, well, we finished our uh, first show of the weekend. Now, time to program since all the ravers have left. Uh, we're gonna program on the main stage for the Lewis the Child show tomorrow. Um, it's probably gonna be a long night, but uh, it should be fun. After all that work and stress, we're just about done. I came back to the hotel to finish up some little programming things I needed to clean up, make some layout views for bitmaps, things like that. But we're all done. Uh, hopefully the show's gonna look awesome. I'm excited to see how the tour rig translates, or the tour file translates into a festival show. This is the first time using it um, in such a way. So I'm gonna pack up real quick and make sure I don't miss lobby call and we'll head over to the venue. Let's go. show was awesome. It was a great time. It was a successful first demo of using the show file that I programmed specifically for the tour rig on a festival stage and it was the first time I got to use uh, my new time code rack. Uh, we're gonna be taking that on the next couple of shows as well. It was a good opportunity to see what I need to do on version 2 when I eventually make that uh, and make sure you stick around to see how I put together that time code rack and how you can build one on your own in an upcoming video. But right now, uh, about five minutes away from lobby call, so I'm gonna finish getting packed up here once again. And we're gonna head out to Reno, Nevada, and then I think just across the border to South Lake Tahoe uh, to go do our overnight programming for this evening. So I love trips like this because you get to go with the whole crew, everybody goes to the airport, uh, sometimes you get to sit next to each other on the plane even. Uh, it's, it's really a fun time. So without further ado, let's head over. Sick. It's hard to do with a Suck it, first try. You missed it yesterday at front of house. <laughs> with my left hand, I did it like casually. I was just like, and I flipped it onto the table and landed it.
Wait, there's buffalo wings in there too. Dude, yeah, there's everything. Is there silverware? There? Silverware is what I'm looking for. Fucking new guy. FNG. It is the Tendies, Buffalo Tendies, Mod Sticks, Hash Balls. Hash Balls. What? It's gonna be a good programming night. We got the, the Denny's, we got a stage that actually works, mozzarella sticks, and like two hours to program with a rig that's fully functional. Who would have ever thought, right? Yeah, top box. Your appetizers. You know, it's pretty rare, especially on these New Year's runs where everybody's traveling like crazy and we're, we're hopping from one show to another. Uh, it's rare that we actually get a chance to experience the places uh, that we're lucky enough to to visit all the time because you know there's a huge difference between visiting a place <laughs> you know going to the airport having a, having a grand old time with TSA uh, and actually getting a chance to experience it and uh, I gotta say South Lake Tahoe in California this is a pretty awesome place and really today has been awesome from top to bottom. Ever since we got here and went to go do our overnight programming session, uh, the local crew had everything super on point, everything was dialed in and ready for us. And it only took us two hours to do our whole programming session. And uh, then we showed up this morning for sound check and everything was just as great as it was last night. So, got a little bit of the afternoon to myself here, you know, get some food and then uh, head over to the venue we got a show to put on. Getting to visit places like this is definitely one of the best perks of this job. There's no doubt about that. But keep in mind that this is only a perk. We're, we're here to do a job. We're here to put on a show and uh, provide value to uh, our production managers, our artists, the people who hire us and who trust us to put on a good show. Uh, a good show that's memorable, that people will enjoy, and uh, that will help build the artist that you're working for. So all these beautiful, wonderful things, you have to keep in mind that if, if you want to get to a position where you're able to travel and uh, work closely with a team of people who are traveling frequently, just keep in mind that the travel part of this gig is earned. And a lot of times you're going to be visiting these awesome places that you can't even see uh, just because you've got a 3 a.m. lobby call like we have tonight. Uh, we have to be on the road at 3 a.m. to head back to Reno, hop on a plane and go do our next festival. And uh, I'm not really looking forward to that. The travel is wonderful, the experiences are awesome, and when you're doing it with a bunch of friends, uh, it makes it all that much better. But still, nothing really quite takes the sting out of that 3 a.m. call time completely. Okay, it's confession time, guys. There was something that happened during this set that I did not notice during our programming session and that happened during the show, and I couldn't figure it out uh, until after the show. If you look closely, you'll notice that there is a vertical strip of X4 bars that are not behaving properly. Uh, and I only found out after we finished the show and I went and investigated what was happening. I, I found a macro that was essentially turning off a requested universe in the Artnet uh, menu in the network protocols setup window. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because I had the rest of the rig, but every other song, this one strip of X4 bars would turn off and it was the third strip of X4 bars. So this was uh, a total rookie move. I, I felt really bad that 
this happened. Uh, it's one of those mistakes that once it happens once, it never happens again, and I, I really hope that's the case. It was a strange problem because it was only on half of the songs that the issue was happening. So it was really, it's really difficult to troubleshoot an intermittent issue, especially when you're in the middle of a set. Um, but yeah, that was a small embarrassing moment for, for me. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, 2.45 a.m. Got a full two hours of sleep. And uh, getting ready to head over to the transport. Head back over to the airport, fly over to Denver, do another show. Do it all over again. This one's gonna be interesting because uh, we're uh, loading in a couple hours before doors. And uh, I don't get an overnight programming session like I usually get. Not that I need it, but uh, more time's always better. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, coming to you live from the 360 cam for the first time. Uh, we're here in Denver, Colorado at Decadence and figured I would just boot up the camera and kind of talk through my process or probably won't talk through it because I'm up against the wall on time right now. But uh, yeah. Right now I'm just cloning uh, the festival rig into my template show file. Um, and I do that because all of the programming for, um, all of the programming for the show exists in an imaginary set of fixtures that don't exist right now. So when we were on tour, we, we took the rig around with us and uh, we built the same rig every day. But when we're doing festivals like this, it's a different rig every day, uh, usually. And uh, because of that, we need to have a way to copy data, which is essentially what merging is, or is what essentially what cloning is. Um, so we can take all that data from the pre-existing programming from the tour and adapt it to different sized shows. So that's what I'm doing right now. There's a couple different ways you can merge data and I tend to use the uh, cloning UI uh, user interface. You can clone using the command line and using things like uh, the if keyword and filters, but uh, the cloning UI is actually pretty good in MA. Um, and you have a couple different ways that you can merge this data as I was just mentioning. Uh, one of those ways, uh, the default way, especially when you're doing your first round of cloning, is the uh, low priority merge, low prio merge, which is different than regular merging because regular merging um, will copy all data to all your presets, worlds, sequences, what have you. Um, and if you hit merge, it will merge in new data, even if there is pre-existing data. But low priority merge doesn't do that. Instead, it will um, ignore copying data if it sees that there is already data there. So that's convenient if you want to have like a RGB strobe act both as an RGB wash light and as a strobe light, which is what we're doing with these Protron Eclipses. Hey, Christian. Yes. I was checking in with you. Everything coming up okay? Yeah. The house. It's great. Hey, nice to actually meet, meet you, meet <laughs> you. Well, we've finally done it. We have reached our fourth and final show for this New Year's Eve week run. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. We're coming towards the end here, and I just want to take a quick second to uh, note that that guy who walked up to me in the last part of that video there uh, is Dave House. Um, I've never gotten a chance to meet him before. He's uh, kind of infamous in the, the lighting design programming MA2 world. Um, he does a lot of huge shows and this is the first time I've had an opportunity to meet him and he's kind of one of my idols. Um, so it was really cool to get a chance to talk shop with him and geek out a little bit over macros and vector works and what have you. So now that I got my own fanboyism out of the way, uh, came back to the hotel for just a moment to freshen up 
and I'm gonna head back over. The streets are teeming with all sorts of EDM ravers getting ready for the big night. Um, I'm excited for this. This is the first time I've had like a full-blown festival set at midnight with like full time-coded countdown, everything like that. Um, I'm excited for it. Not so nervous. I mean, at this point, I don't really get nervous at shows anymore. Um, but you know, there's always that thing in the back of your mind thinks, well, maybe something will go wrong, but it's not gonna happen. It's definitely not gonna happen. So uh, I'm scheduled to be back on site in 10 minutes. Figured we'll wrap things up here, head back over to the venue, and uh, yeah, we'll wrap this one up. Yeah, just in case you were wondering, that is Shaq, aka DJ Diesel, <laughs> on the stage and totally destroying the place. I've never seen him play before, and I didn't even know he was on the lineup. I think I speak for our whole crew when I say we weren't anticipating having to follow up Shaq, DJ Diesel, but it was a pleasant surprise because it was maybe one of the most entertaining moments of the whole weekend. After weeks of hard work from everyone on the crew, it finally comes down to this moment that is the New Year's Eve countdown. Getting this part of the show right was really important and everybody on the whole crew nailed it. And this was my first time having a time-coded midnight countdown uh, in the middle of a time-coded set, which is a little bit interesting. You have to do some math on the uh, front end to make sure that you're starting the set exactly when the, the midnight marker matches up with the drop in the song so that the visuals and everything matches. Our ground package on this run consisted of 12 X4 bar 20s, six four cell LED blinders. I didn't really care what brand, they're pretty much all the same. A four cell blinder is a four cell blinder. And those laser bars from Laser Wolf that you see down at the bottom. If you already had a chance to check out my rig rundown from our tour setup, then you know that I'm using the MA to both control lighting, visuals, as well as Pangolin Beyond for all of our laser cues. Parker did an amazing job programming our laser cues, and it never fails to impress seeing them hit just right. And on top of that, he makes sure that our laser bars are in tip-top shape for every show. Headed back to Seattle now, just uh, getting on the plane, and my lucky day, got the uh, seat upgrade. So, nice little cherry on top for a really awesome run of shows this weekend. Well guys, we've made it back home, and that means I get to retire a few more festival wristbands and passes. I really kind of like the lights all night one. It's a uh, pretty good guys. Um, but anyways, really stoked about the last couple of shows to round out 2019. It always seems like every single year I'm saying, wow, that was the busiest year I've had so far. And 2019 was the busiest year I've had so far uh, as expected. So this was a nice little set of shows, um, four shows pretty much back to back to back. Uh, to round out this awesome year. I had like two bus tours, a bunch of fly dates, one-offs, um, some very first time things for me as well happened this year. Um, very excited about all of that. And I wanted to say thank you guys for tagging along, not only for this video, I know it's getting uh, a little bit long right now. So thank you guys for sticking through to the end, but for also supporting me uh, throughout this whole year and throughout my whole journey. Um, you guys, it really means a lot to me that uh, you guys are always interacting with me online or liking, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. Um, I really appreciate it and I hope that uh, I'm kind of repaying the favor um, to you guys by uh, showing you stuff that maybe you might not see otherwise. So thanks to all of you watching the video and who have been supportive of me this entire time. It means a lot. Also big thank you to the supporters over on Patreon. If you want to extend your support a little bit, you're not obligated to. In fact, all of the perks over on Patreon are available for free. If you sign up uh, and become a patron, you can subscribe and unsubscribe. You can get content when you want it. Um, and it's kind of like a, a donate as you want to kind of method, if that makes sense. So you can go there, um, check it out if you like it, Pay for it. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. 
keep whatever you want. <laughs> it's not really a, a sound business model if uh, if there ever was one, but uh, it's it's a way for me to say thank you to you, thank you to you guys for supporting me. Um, and support over there helps me make this YouTube channel viable. As it is, I'm spending about 80 to 100 hours a week, every single week, working on shows, uh, doing designs, programming, um, traveling for festivals, actually doing the shows. All that stuff really adds up to a hectic schedule and it's just not possible with the amount of work that I have right now to also be editing these videos and putting everything together. Um, so all the support over there has allowed me to bring on an additional editor. Um, this is actually going to be his first video. So everybody say hi, Jason, down in the comments. <laughs> Other than that, we have a whole bunch of new exciting things for 2020 that um, I'm excited to share with you as we go forward. Bunch of new projects, some new clients, um, moving into a new video shooting space. Very excited about that. Be able to have a very, very repeatable um, uh, kind of static camera setup so that I can just kind of hit record and not have to worry about like setting up lights and getting the background and this overhead hair light, all that stuff is going to be preset. So I can just kind of sit down, hit record and uh, it'll make things a whole lot easier. You should be seeing a lot more videos coming very, very soon. So thank you guys so much. I know this video is getting a little bit long. Make sure to stay subscribed because in the next few videos, I'm going to be putting together a video on how to build your own time code rack. It's going to be basically the same as that existing rack over there, but I needed one that had MA parameters in it. So it's going to be slightly different. The reason I needed two time code racks, um, not just to make a video, because that'd be kind of a big waste of money because those things aren't cheap. Um, the real reason is I have brought on a another client, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Young Bay, and uh, we're working on a travel rig for show control, lighting, and visuals that just all plays back um, from a time code rack. And much more coming up this year. 2020 should be really good. I hope you guys had an awesome 2019 and I hope you're looking forward to a brand new year uh, in 2020. And uh, yeah, all right, that's enough for this video. <laughs> Appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.